All right, next up is wide receiver Cornell Powell. Please go ahead with questions. Hey, Cornell, it's Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com. How good did it feel on Saturday night to break out the orange britches and clinch your sixth straight um, ACC championship game berth? I guess it's the fifth straight for you personally. Um, it felt amazing. Uh, we know when we pull out those orange pants, you know, it's really business. And, you know, we, wish, we just wanted to go out there and take care of it and, and leave no doubt. And I think we did that. What do you think um, the difference was for y'all in the second half when you really opened things up? I guess it was the the last that last drive of the first half uh, when you you uh, you scored that touchdown in the four four minute offense. Uh, but in the second half, you all really um, opened things up offensively. Um, I don't think it was much of a difference between the first half and the second half. You know, we only had four possessions in the first half, and we ended up scoring uh, three out of those four. Uh, the second half, you know, our defense really uh, created turnovers and gave us more opportunities with the ball. And we just went out there and made the most of them. So shout out to them for, for holding it down. But, you know, the second half, we just wanted to you know, make make we knew that we, they were trying to hold the ball. So we had, we had to ensure that we made every uh, possession count. And we did that. Is it difficult when you're on the sideline as much as you were in the first half, uh, waiting to get your opportunities when, when the other team is, is really milking the clock the way they were? Uh, no, you just have to trust your preparation and, and go out there and just execute uh, to perfection, really. And I think we did that on Saturday and it showed. Cornell, Cornell this is... Be, um, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Trevor. You're good. Go ahead. Uh, I know y'all are going to be really focused on yourselves this week since you, you have an extra week to prepare for Notre Dame, but um, just, just how excited are you about getting another crack at those guys? Uh, we're really excited to, to have the opportunity to go play for the ACC Championship. You know, every week is always about Clemson and, and doing and focusing on our, our details and, and minimizing turnovers and, and mistakes, you know, so regardless of whoever was going to be uh, my opponent this next weekend, you know, we was always going to focus on ourselves and, and go out there and try to play the best four quarters plus the football that we can. Cornell, just as a follow-up to that, this is Grace from The Athletic. Um, what impressed you most about Notre Dame's defense when you guys saw them last month? Um, they're very disciplined, fast, uh, sound, and they, they did their job, you know, and uh, they, made it, they made it tough for us. You know, we really had to go out there and execute. Um, and it was just a great game. You know, competition was at an all-time high, and uh, I'm really looking forward to Saturday, well, next Saturday. Cornell, it's Trevor again. Were you aware that you were 10 yards shy on Saturday night of, uh, of standing alone um, in the record books uh, with four straight 100-yard reception games? No, I did not know. I didn't find out until after the game I got on the bus, you know, and – Obviously, it would have been an honor to have that record, but you know, I'm more, I'm more impressed and more excited with the win that our guys, uh, that we had as a team, you know, and um, you know, individual awards, individual accolades, you know, they, they, they are special, but it's, it's really, it's more special when you get the team win. Hey, Cornell, it's David Hood. The year that you redshirted, did you make the trip to the ACC championship game? Um, I did not make it. So you've, you've been, you know, three times. What is maybe your favorite memory of an ACC championship game, whether it's at the game, before the game, after? What is a favorite memory for you? Uh, the best memory would probably be after we beat Miami uh, with Kelly. Uh, you know, going into that game, they was probably one or two in turnovers. You know, they had the big turnover chain thing going on. And we went out there, we shut them out, we dominated. You know, we – quiet all the noise and we were in the locker room and we cut the chain. I mean, I think that was, that was pretty dope. So that was probably my favorite memory. Not a lot of people get any type of a, of a ring when they're in college other than they graduate. You have a chance at five ACC championship rings. Mm -hmm. What do you do with all of this hardware? Oh man, you, you, 
you first of all you find somewhere to, to put it that's safe you know and i feel like those rings are are just a, a small a small representation of all the hard work all those teams put in um, throughout those years you know uh, going back well winning one is is, is is amazing but going back and winning and four in a row uh trying to go for five in a row for myself personally is just you know unheard of and as a program i think it's six in a row so you know, uh, you just you just never take it for granted. Always grateful for the opportunity, and you know they they always come far and few between. So you go out there, you make the most of them. So it's going to be special. Do you feel like you have the chance to appreciate that now, or is that one of those things where five or six years from now, you know, you'll be sitting there holding a a child that's yours, and 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 looking back on it, maybe it'll be more special then. Um, I definitely appreciate it now. Uh, all the guys that I've grinded with uh, over the past five years and, and getting to that moment, I know all the work that we put in, but definitely after my time here at Clemson is done uh, and I look back on it and we have a reunion or something like that, it's definitely going to mean more. It's going to be way more special. Uh, and it's, you know, I, I was able to be a part of one of the greatest decades in Clemson history. So, you know, just never take it for granted. Hey, hey Cornell, it's Josh from the from the Post and Courier. Um, we, we heard a lot about uh, Joe and God entering this season with obviously he's had a lot of health stuff this year. How has he been holding up mentally through all that? Oh, he's, he's good. You know, um, obviously when you're dealing with the injury as as an athlete, you know, it's tough. But uh, he we as a team and as a wide receiver group, you know, we try to stay encouraging him and stay positive, you know. And uh, obviously we miss him and we wish he could be out there with us. He's a great talent, him and Frank and Ross, you know, this, that's the th crazy thing about this team, you know, uh, from the wide receiver standpoint, uh, no matter who we have out there, you know, we're going to dominate, but we could be, it could be that much more scarier if we had all our pieces. So. Cornell, uh, Larry Williams with TigerIllustrated.com. What is it like to look over there on the sideline and see <laughs> Justin and, and Joseph and Frank, and there, I mean, three like five star type guys unavailable for this offense. Um, you know, you want to go out there and, and give your all for those guys because they, you know that they'll give anything to be out there with you. So it's going back to making the most of your opportunities and, and never taking it for granted because uh, that could easily be me on the sideline. So just going out there and playing for those guys. I know the work that they put in over the spring um, and the summer. And, and, to, and to be injured and miss a lot of a lot of the season is really is really tough. So every game is going out there and make sure that I'm upholding the standard for those guys. What would things look like right now if all three of those guys were healthy and available? It would be a very, very scary sight. Do y'all – I mean, the trend this year has been defenses doing everything they can to take away Travis, take away the running game sort of gambling that, you know, putting it on you guys. As a receiving core, do y'all have a sense of that and have y'all had a sense of that all year? Yeah, we knew when, as soon as Travis uh, announced that he was coming back that it was going to – we had we would have to win our one-on-one -on -one matchups from the get-go. And we took it as a challenge. You know, we, we, we took that and we ran with it. And, you know, every game, every week we go out there and we prepare – uh, for one-on-one -on -one coverage because we know that they're going to try, try to stop Travis. And if we do our job, then the team will be successful, you know. But it's, it's all credit to Travis, man. He's such a, a phenomenal back, uh, a player, an athlete, a blocker. You know, he he does all the dirty work, you know. And he'll, he'll break it, and that's what everyone gives him glory for. But, you know, the ability to go stand in the, stand in the backfield and pick, on, pick up blockers and allow us to do our thing on the outside because they're trying to stop him is a testament to his talent and, you know, I think that's why he's so great. Cornell, this is David with ESPN. Um, you, talking about Travis and, and again, obviously these defenses are doing the best to try to keep him from putting up big numbers. He, he's gone, I think, six straight without a hundred yard game. Do you see any of that start to like frustrate him or wear on him or is he just like happy to be there? Uh, Travis is probably one of the most humble guys I know uh, f as far as a superstar talent. Uh, goes and he never he never wavers he never uh, seems down you know he's excited to to go out there and, and win games with us because 
at the end of the day, he he knows his talent and he knows his worth. And he, he still he still dominates. He still impacts the game um, as, as much as possible. Um, as much as anyone in the in the country, he's probably one of the he probably is the best running back in the country. And uh, him him not having a hundred yard game uh, doesn't really mean much to him, you know. As long as we win. The the other guy who obviously didn't have to be there this year if he could have opted out or he could have opted out and didn't is is Trevor. And I think a lot of people since almost since the day he got to Clemson have said, well, Trevor doesn't really need to play college. He's already so refined and this great quarterback. What have you seen both on and off the field from him and his growth this year? Like, is how is he different to you and and more prepared for what comes next in his life after going through this year with you guys? Oh, he attacks every day um, as if it's the, the week of the national championship. Um, his preparation, the way he practices, his intensity, his attention to details, his focus. And, you know, a guy of that talent, if you add all, add all those ingredients and, and, and combine his work ethic, Man, it's amazing, and and every week you see it. You know, he's. It seems like he gets better every week, and I'm just blessed to be able to be on the same field as him and and the catch passes from him. I, I remember talking to him after his freshman year, and he felt like it felt to me talking to him that he was very much kind of interested in trying to define who he wanted to be as a, you know, an adult, a grown man before he went out into the NFL and makes millions of dollars. How, how much do you think that? all the stuff that you guys did together this summer in terms of social justice stuff and the we want to play stuff. Do you, do you think that was a little bit of a, a, an important step for him in, in doing exactly that kind of defining who he wanted to be at the next level? Um, to me personally, uh, Trevor's in a phenomenal uh, college football player, but he's a even better person. And, you know, the media doesn't see half the things that he does and off the field and, the things that we did over this summer is just a small portion of what he normally does from day to day. He's a, he's a great guy. He stop and take pictures with anybody and sign whatever you need, you know, and, and that's just, that's just who he is. You know, he didn't need this summer uh, and the social justice movement to help him define who he is. He's a, he's a man of God and he's a, he's a better friend than anyone can ask for. You know, he's very loyal and he'll do anything for you. And, and, those things alone sets him apart, but to add on the fact that he's an even better football player is just amazing. So, Thanks, man. Hey, Cornell, this is Anna with uh, Clemson 24-7. This might be kind of a dumb question, but obviously you've faced uh, Notre Dame's corners. They've faced you. Is, is there an advantage more so for a wide receiver or a corner um, than the other after already having faced each other in a, on a one-on-one type of situation in terms of knowing their tendencies and kind of how they play? Um, I wouldn't say it is. Um, every week you have to prepare and, uh, and get better. You know, uh, we played a couple games since Notre Dame and they played a couple games. So you have to go back to the drawing board and start fresh. You can't go in there with the mindset that, you know, I did this or I did that and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. You know, uh, stats, touchdown catches, they don't roll over from week to week. So you have to go back and, and visit film and, and study it and get to know your opponent and start from fresh all over again and, and go in with the mindset that you're trying to dominate. So it's, no, it's really no advantage. Hey Cornell, Josh again. Um, we know Justin has that big doctor's appointment coming up. Um, just from what you've seen from him, how are his spirits? What is his, what's his kind of his mindset? Going into uh, that. Justin comes in here. He works every day. Um, he, I feel like, you know, he's he ran routes with us a couple of times, and you know, I feel like he hasn't had a drop off since the injury, and it's amazing to see. Um, his spirits have been high. You know, he laughing, joking, smiling, and um, obviously I'm praying for him. You know, I would love to see him back on the field soon. He's a unbelievable talent. You know, and and. You know, having him it would be that much better. So uh, he's definitely in high spirits, though. Cornell, just as a follow up to that, this is Grace again from The Athletic. What have you guys learned from Justin this year as he has had to navigate all of that? Oh, man, just really not taking stuff for granted, you know, uh, especially with this year, you know, you, in football, normally you're always a injury away or whatever but this year you know you got an injury you got COVID so just really like just having a greater appreciation for the game and, and coming in every day and working as if 
you might not get tomorrow. So it's really been the mindset for the whole team, like learning from Justin, just how to work and how to how to handle adversity and, and a hard time. And I feel like he's the perfect example of that. Any other questions for Cornell? All right, thank you, Cornell. Thanks, Cornell. Next up will be Darian Rencher at approximately noon.